the White House will roll out the red carpet for the first African leader to be hosted for a state visit since 2008. Kenyan President William Ruto will get a lavish state dinner and some deals, the White House has said. But also on the table are Nairobi's aims to leverage Washington's assistance and influence after Kenya offered to send a peacekeeping force to Haiti. Viewers Anita Powell reports from the White House. White House gave VOA its three reasons for choosing Kenya's president to break the nearly 16-year drought during which no African leader has been honored with a state visit. These include the two governments' shared democratic convictions and their like-minded approach in leveraging the private sector. The primary reason, the administration's new top Africa policymaker told VOA, is Kenya's recent decision to assert itself globally by offering 1,000 security officers for Haiti. Frances Brown is Senior Director for African Affairs at the National Security Council. She sat down with VOA this week for her first media interview since taking the job earlier this month. We chose Kenya for a few reasons. Number one is the Kenya-U.S. partnership has really grown from a regionally focused one to a globally focused one. So we've been really pleased the way the Kenyans have stepped up to play leadership beyond their region. Analysts say a state visit is a big deal. Cameron Hudson is a senior fellow in the Africa program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. It is uh, the highest diplomatic honor that uh, our president can bestow. Uh, is typically an indicator of, of a very close uh, and important bilateral relationship. And so elevating uh, you know, Kenya to the level of, let's say, a Japan, which was the most recent country to have a, a state visit, I think is is symbolic. Uh, and it's important for for all the reasons that I just described, as far as Kenya being uh, on a level that we would give it the same, uh, you know, privileges as a as as one of our oldest and, and, and longest uh, security partners. Brown said the administration aims to use the visit to reach agreements in areas like technology, climate management, debt relief, and health. And on the Haiti security mission, Washington has signaled its approval with a $300 million pledge of support. Brown again. We've been working really closely with them. As you may know, um, there's been planning underway for a number of months. It's included p- policing experts from around the world work- working to develop a concept of operations. Kenya's not going it alone. Kenyan President William Ruto, on his first stop in Atlanta, said he'd prioritize the need for American help in restructuring the debts of African nations, many of them to China, the world's largest creditor. But human rights advocates in Nairobi told VOA they hope American leadership will also raise concerns over abuses by Kenyan police, who are taking the lead in the Haiti mission. They also shared fears around proposed legislation they say threatens sexual minorities and a decline in media freedoms. Irungu Houghton is executive director for Amnesty International Kenya. We, first of all, see this as a really excellent opportunity to focus on governance, human rights, and rule of law um, for many reasons. Both the United States and Kenya um, are uh, nations that have projected themselves as essentially, um, you know, nations that believe in these values. And um, the, the state dinner is an opportunity really to focus on that. All this drama playing on this stage on Thursday. Anita Powell, VOA News, the White House. Chadi's Prime Minister and Opposition Leader Success Masala has tendered his resignation after interim President Mahmoud Idris Deby was confirmed as a winner of the May 6th presidential election, Masala said on Wednesday. Masla, a staunch opponent of the junta, which seized power in April 2021, was appointed prime minister of the transitional government in January, four months ahead of the poll, in a move to appease the opposition. In March, his candidacy was cleared for the presidential election to return the country to constitutional rule. The oil, the oil producing country is the first of a string of coup hit states in West and Central Africa Sahel region to attempt such a return. Before the official announcement of a preliminary result, Masla claimed victory, alleging that electoral fraud was being planned. Chadi's state election body said Debbie had won the election outright with 61% of the vote, and the Constitutional Council later confirmed him as a winner. Masla has acknowledged the council's ruling and said there were no other legal means to contest the results. 
in accordance with the constitution. I have today presented my resignation and that of the transitional government, which has become irrelevant with the end of the presidential election of May 6th, Masla said on X on Wednesday. Debbie's victory prolongs the rule of the family that has had a firm grip on power since his father took over in a coup in the early 1990s. Open the door, one thing certain, I'll always be your